Fubar here, and today we are going to be talking about howitzers. Not all artillery in this video, just specifically howitzers. The Liberty howitzer and the Martyr howitzer. What's the differences between them? What is the best officers to pair with them? What's the tier, the officer tier list in comparison to them? Now, I'm just going to make a, a comment right here. All exclusive officers, no matter the officer, no matter the unit, or S tier. S tier officer, okay? Now on to the modern howitzer. The modern howitzer is more geared for dealing vehicle damage to targets than structure damage. It has a 250% structure damage rating in comparison to the Liberty howitzer. The Liberty howitzer has a 300% structure damage rating, okay? Also, another major comparison is that the Liberty howitzer can have its reload time reduced based off certain aspects such as officers and modifications okay now if you want to see the fastest time to reduce the liberty howard's reload time please check out antonio liek on youtube or aka 44 mag he's in my discord he also has he does post his videos there, and you can look it up. He did a video recently within the last two weeks on this subject, on the Liberty Howitzer. So, jumping into it. When you first start in the game, you have very limited options for artillery pieces, and especially the Howitzer. So, you have to be wise in your selection on which officers you want to use with them. So, right off the gate, you want to... Awaken Antonina Chevchenko. She is an S class officer. She is an S class all the way up to 300 days. She, she holds value even now. And she's one of only two officers who give you an increased map grid. Now, both howitzers can only go up to five map grids. And with this in mind, now you. With only two officers in the game that can go up to five map five map grids, this makes her insanely valuable. Because this increases your range, keeps you out of harm's way. So very good. She has great skill damage. Sorry for the lag. Just please bear with me. Um so her tactical skill. Increases her, it ha, it, she has an additional damage if she's in an artillery troop by 25% and does a damage coefficient of 1,200. This means right off the get-go, the get if because she, she's in an artillery troop, she will automatically be doing approximately, yeah, I'm right on that, 1,500 damage coefficient. Her second skill increases garrison troop damage. Oh my god, this connecting to the server is just killing me. I'm sorry. So her second skill does increases officer's troop damage when garrisoned. And her third skill increases firepower by 30%. And here's another kicker. So she increases the officer's skill damage by 25 additional percent. Making this go up by another 300, giving her an 1,800 damage coefficient. This is what makes her very potent. And this is what has made her stand the test of time all the way through. Now, you have several options to pair her with. And we're going to go through this right now. So, right off the gate, the fastest for the what well, has been tested by numerous content creators, such as Death Wish, um, Scooter on YouTube. I believe also Antonio Rudiek has also done it as well. Um, Eruptor is well, is a very good choice to be put together with her in the beginning of the game. And the reason being is because he has, he has a not so good uh, skill damage for his tactical skill of 1,050. He does increase the kill radius by 6%. He does additional fortification damage. He increases troop fire. I mean, troop yeah, troop firepower of the artillery by thirty percent. 
and then he increases kill radius again. And but his awaken skill is he reduces the load time of this officer's artillery by ten percent. Now another pairing that was very popular all the way through and it still is today is War Machine with Antonin Shevchenko. War Machine is an S class officer, where while as Eruptor is an A class um, officer. Eruptor is an A class because his skills, some of his skills are really good, but he has he doesn't do enough damage. But his his awakened skill is still very valuable. Now on to War Machine. Like I said, he's S class. You can awaken him for free by purchasing your tokens for him in the Alliance store. He has a very solid uh, tactical skill, which decreases load time and does a skill damage coefficient of 1,200. He increases the officer troop damage by 15%. He increases the officer's firepower, firepower of the troop by 20%. And then he does another load time reduction by 10%. And also, when he's awakened, he reduces load time again for an additional 10% for 8 seconds. So that means you can get 20% load time reduction. So that's why he is an S-Class officer. That load time reduction on a howitzer is very valuable. Now going on to the next officer that I would recommend at the beginning of the game. It's going to be Tip of Spear. Tip of Spear can be used on a howitzer. Because he reduces the skill prep time, you would want to use him with Antony Chichenko or Eruptor. Because when you start the game, you only get two artillery officers directly. But what he does is he increases unit firepower. He increases um, unit fire, firepower buff again with, with the troop for 20%. He increases damage resist of the troop. He increases the blast damage resist. And he reduces skill prep time. And he also increases the damage of the troop when awakened by um, 50%. And he also increases the firepower of friendly troops within two map grids for seven seconds. Which can be very valuable. And But in order for this to take effect, he has to be the lead officer in a troop. So you would want to put him with... Him as the leader, and then Antonina as the aide, or whatever other officer you want to use as an aide. Now, the next officer I'm going to suggest as a legacy officer that could be paired with between all those would be Bloody Mary. Bloody Mary does a disorientating effect that stops them from attacking or pauses their skill prep time. She increases damage, she increases the movement speed of the troop, and she has a passive heal. Now, howitzers move very slow, so being able to pop out of base, move up just a little bit, get your shot off, and get back into base safely is pretty good. And also, pausing their attack and their skill prep is also very valuable. Now, this is Tiger Marauder. Tiger Marauder is a new legacy officer, and he does a considerable amount of damage with his tactical skill if he is awakened. If he is not awakened, it's kind of like a gamble. But his other skills are still valuable. So him and Bloody Mary are both A-tier officers in this little conundrum. So his second skill increases unit firepower. His third skill increases troop damage resist by 15%. And his third skill... His fourth skill is a passive heal again. <clears throat> Once you hit 182 days, you actually get only one artillery officer, and this would be Berserker Bear. Berserker Bear is more kitted for the rocket truck, but he can still be used on a howitzer. His tactical skill does 15... 100 uh, damage coefficient and he increases the blast damage of this officer's artillery troop by 25% for 8 seconds also he increases the, the HP of this officer's artillery by 10 by 30% and then he also increases the firepower of this officer's artillery by 30% when this 
officer's troop kills an enemy unit, it has a 30% chance to reduce the skill prep time by one second. This skill can be triggered by one, one time every eight seconds, which is it's a gamble to get, but it's still valuable. Now, his awakened skill is that he, when he attacks another officer, sorry, let me restart that because I'm kind of mumbling over my words. The attacks of this officer's artillery troop have a 30% chance to set the target on fire, dealing damage every second, damage coefficient of 100 for four seconds. So it means you have a 30% chance to deal fire tick damage. Of four of a total of four hundred damage coefficient. So his skills are valuable. He has decent damage coefficient, but I'm gonna rate him as an A tier officer because there is better officers coming forward. <clears throat> now on to the three hundred days. We're gonna start with the exclusive lounge officer, Lady Liberty. Lady Liberty is the only other officer in the game that increases your map grid range. Her tactical skill has the highest damage coefficient for an artillery officer in the game. Okay. Her damage coefficient is 2,000. And she also, if she's in an artillery troop, reduces the troop load time by 15%. She also increases this officer's artillery by I mean, firepower of this officer's artillery by 40%. She has a unique special skill that is called silence that also, uh, like, it has a 25% chance to silence the troop, which makes the officer, which stops the officer's skill prep time for two seconds and can be triggered once every four seconds. Her fourth skill, if she's in an artillery troop, the troop deals. 20-35% extra damage to troops that ha currently have more HP than the troop itself. And like I said, her awakened skill increases the map grid by one. She is an S-class officer because of this. You cannot, on a howitzer, you, like I said, you cannot increase it over five map grids. But this would make it super useful if you're using two howitzers. Because now you can have Antonina on one and her on the other. Now... I would pair Lady Liberty with War Machine for the for the additional load time reduction, which will decrease the load time by 35% at most when he has his uh, Waking Skill fired off. So, and when it's not, he's going to have 25%. At this point in time, if you're field fighting, I would recommend Saber of the Nation with also Antonina or Lady Liberty. He's another exclusive lounge officer. He is geared towards field fighting more than destroying bases. And his first, his tactical skill is he does 1,200 damage coefficient, but he does an extra 100 damage for every one map grid between this officer and the target. So that means you can... Five map grids, that means 1,700 damage coefficient. He also offers 15% damage resist. He increases damage dealt by this officer's artillery to tanks and helicopters by 20%. And he also, this officer's artillery deals 30% extra damage to troops below 50% HP. Now, his awakened skill... His, the normal attacks of this artillery officer's artillery troop give a 30% chance to instantly activate Saber of the Nation's tactical skill. Very good, very potent. Now, the so he's also S-Class because he's an exclusive lounge officer. The next officer I would like to talk about, which you can't awaken free to play because he's not an exclusive lounge, and he's also S-Class is Eye of Providence. Eye of Providence is like a cheat code. Once you awaken him, he's going to destroy bases left and right real quick and easy. So his 
So his tactical skill allows him to do 1,500 damage coefficient. And if he's in an artillery troop, he does the skill does an extra 25% damage. So that means it will be roughly... I want to say right around an additional 350 points of damage coefficient, which will bring it up to 1850. His second skill shortens the prep time of your officer's skills by 12.5%. And this affects all officers in the troop. So that means you could be effectively almost reduce the prep time of your skill by one second. All right, third skill increases the damage dealt by this officer's troop by 32% when attacking fortifications. Now, on his fourth skill, he increases the firepower of this officer's artillery by 40%, increases the firepower by an extra 10% when fighting outside of your alliance's active territory. That's a pretty big buff. That's a 50% firepower increase. Now, his awakened skill, which makes this super, like, potent, is when in an artillery troop, increases skill damage dealt to bases by 40% for all officers in the troop. That is a big bump. That is a big bump. Now, the next officer that is more of a defensive officer that you we, could, we also get at 300 days is Argent Flame. Argent Flame is another good choice to be put into the mix because he has a good damage overall. And he is A, a tier for this one. If he was on a different unit, he would be going to S tier. <clears throat> He's the only other officer in the game that has to be the leader of the troop in order for him to get the additional buff on his skill. So keep this in mind. He has a damage coefficient of 1,500. And he, if he's the tr captain of the troop, he will get an extra 25% skill damage given to his aid. He increases garrison. I mean, he has a damage resist buff of 20%, which is one of two officers in the game that have the same amount, which is the highest. And that's between him and Lady J. He increases the garrison damage of your this troop by 35%. He also increases the firepower of this artillery troop by 40%. His awakened skill. He fires an artillery shell at an enemy. Damage coefficient of 1500. And if this officer is in an artillery troop. This skill also damages up to three enemy ground force troops. Within one map grid of the target target of the target you're firing at with a damage coefficient of 700 and 20 percent less for each additional target so it'd be 700 500 500 like uh 300 would be the damage if serving as the troop captain this skill also increases skill damage of his aid by 25 percent so if you put him with antonina chipchenko you can now boost that damage even further, and that's going to be even more potent. <clears throat> now let's give some honorable mentions of versatile officers that could be used at this time. Now keep in mind, I of Providence and Argent Flame are unlocked at 300 days, and so is Lady Liberty that we discussed. So at 182 days, you get a couple officers that are flex well one officer that is flexible that can be used in conjunction with Argent Flame or Antonia Chichenko or Lady Liberté and that would be Golden Eagle. He does great damage to tanks and helicopters. He does an additional troop damage on his tactical skill for every hundred millimeters of armor. He gives damage resist a crit chance and he also <clears throat> increases this officer's troop damage by 20% with normal attacks. And the normal attacks ignore 10% of the enemy's damage resist 
by 10%. So you could use him on, on an artillery, but in this case, I wouldn't use him. I would stick with artillery officers. Now, Lady Justice. Lady Justice can be used, but I don't recommend it. Um, she does good skill damage, which is 1,500, and it reduces the target speed by 50% so they can't get away. So this would be great for pinning down helicopter units or light tank units or even MBTs. Her second skill increases the firepower of this officer's troop by 30%. An additional 5% when you're fighting in Alliance active territory. So this would be very good when you're on a base defense. And you're in your territory and you're trying to defend. This will not only pin your targets. But it will also increase the firepower of your troop. She also has a critical strike rating of, of up to 15%. And will deal 150% damage. That's a good, pretty good chance. Also, she has the... the Damage resist buff of 20%, which is valuable, which the only other officer that has that will be Argent Flame. Her Awakened skill is almost identical to the standard tactical skill, but she increases the target speed reduction, reducing the target speed by an additional two seconds. But she also increases her troops damage and speed by 15% for six seconds so this is valuable because if you're in a base defense scenario you put her on her your artillery she fires off her skill now you have a little bit 15% speed to get back into your base after you deploy it if your artillery piece moved out one or two grids so this is very valuable in that sense so Lady Liberty would be another A tier because, like I said, I would recommend I would recommend using artillery officers with artillery officers, and the most potent pairings would be Antonia Shevchenko with Eye of Providence, Lady Liberty, and Saber of the Nation, or Antonina. With War Machine, or War Machine, and Lady Liberty, or Argent Flame, with Antonina Shevchenko. And also another potent combo that could be considered would be Tip of Spear with Antonina for that increased time reduction on her sk tactical skill. <laughs> so... That's going to be it for the video today. I am sorry it was a little bit longer. I am starting a community Discord. If you did find this video helpful, please join the community. Please like, comment, and subscribe. I'm trying to build an information hub for all people to join and be able to collect the data collectively. Also, if you're a content creator and you're covering Warpath, come join the channel. I would love for you to come share your content with us. And this will only help the Warpath community grow and be well informed. Thank you and have a great day. Peace.